Hi, welcome to section 2, Speed Up Your App with Tile Caching. In this section we will use tiles, pre-rendered portions of a map, to allow your app to load more rapidly. While the subject of tile caching can get pretty complex, I'll be covering the material you need to know to get your tile cache up and running and fix any issues that may occur. First we'll cover the tile caching basics. Then you'll learn how to configure tile caching in GeoServer. Next you'll create a tile-backed web map app. You'll learn to use the tile cache. Finally, we'll explore methods for solving problems with tile caching. Let's get started with the basics of tile caching. In this video, you'll learn key concepts for tile caching, including tile caching schemes. We'll look at some software options for tile caching. Finally, you'll learn about the process associated with the GeoServer tile caching stack that we'll be using in this section. Tile caching is very useful when you're working with background maps or for static content that does not change very often or involve much interaction. An example of tile caching is OpenStreetMap, and you can see tile caching at work as we zoom in and out of the map. Portions of the map are pre-rendered as tiles, little images, and then they're stitched together by the front-end OpenLayers client. And this allows very complex cartography to be delivered very quickly onto our browser, avoiding the need to render that information in the browser or on the server in real time. Here you can see two major tile caching schemes in GeoServer, WMSC and TMS. Tile caching schemes use differing ways to refer to tiles and allow web clients to communicate with servers, like GeoServer, to retrieve tiles in the appropriate way. While WMSC is used for geographic coordinate bounding boxes to identify tiles, the new schemes TMS and WMST use coordinates based on the tile scheme itself, each tile numbered by its place on a grid, which is defined by variable grid origins. We can disable all of these other tile caching schemes as we are going to be using WMSC, which is enabled separately in its own section under services. This example illustrates tile-based coordinates. So instead of seeing the typical lat-long coordinates that you would be used to, you can see coordinates based on their place within this tile grid. So 125 matches up here, 125. All of these tiles will have the same, sorry, 1025. And negative 681 will match across this row. And this 11 at the beginning matches with the zoom. So now we're at 10 and 9 and so on. It's important to think about tile caches in terms of fixed parameters. Though there is some wiggle room for allowing the client to select variable parameters, you will get the best results by sticking to minimal parameters that fit your use case. For example, in the case of image formats, select JPEG if compression is desired. This is a great option for imagery, and PNG if using vector data. Select PNG 8 if 256 colors are adequate, and simply PNG if a wider color palette is necessary. PNG 8 uses 8 bits. There are a number of software options for tile caching with your map app. Some of these include GDAO or Goodle, the popular command line geospatial utility, Mapnik, which is the backend for the Mapbox project and others, and GeoWebCache. GeoWebCache is available as a standalone instance but is also embedded in GeoServer, so we will focus on GeoWebCache. Unlike file-based tile caches running on HTTP servers, GeoServer via GeoWebCache provides web service endpoints for map tiles for static and dynamic tile caching, and additional capabilities. This diagram explains how tile caching works with GeoServer. On the browser side, we have a map client like OpenLayers, and in the OpenLayers source, there's a WMST class, or WMTS class, that we can use for WMTS type tile cache schemes. There's other classes available for other schemes. The OpenLayers app first checks on the browser cache to see if a tile is already available for the given tile that's needed within the map view. Note that this max age of the image file can be set within GeoServer to limit the caching of tiles. This is especially useful for debugging purposes. 
on the geo server side, when a tile is not found in the cache, the contact will be made to the geo server endpoint for that layer, which refers to geo web cache. It can directly refer to the geo web cache endpoint or to the WMS endpoint with a tiled parameter. We'll be using the direct to geo web cache endpoint. When the contact is made to the geo web cache endpoint, geo web cache will check on the file system to see if that image tile has already been created. And if so, that tile will be served back to the browser as a response to the HTTP request. If that tile is not already available, GeoWebCache will dynamically render that tile.